L'occupation humaine peut prendre une multitude de formes. Dans cette vidéo, nous vous proposons d'explorer les sciences de l'occupation dans une perspective scandinave. Nous sommes allés interroger quatre experts en sciences de l'occupation en Suède et au Danemark. Well, I, I mean, occupational science really strengthens the uh, mm. occupational the occupational paradigm mm. in occupational therapy because it's easy to be influenced by um, well medical sciences, mm. behavioral sciences. But I think occupational science give, gives us the language for how to promote occupation mm. as an important aspect of uh, treatments and, and rehabilitation. So it, it, it really strengthens um, the identity, I think, of occupational therapists to base their thinking mm -hmm. on occupational science. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. I think occupational science is really important because before we had occupational science, we were borrowing our knowledge from all of the different mm -hmm. professions. We need a theoretical foundation, we need theoretical concept to be able to formulate the unique perspective that we mm -hmm. actually have. If we don't have that language, if we don't have that concept, and um, if we're not uh, able to, to uh, explain this as a unique perspective and ground it in scientific research. We don't have anything on the health arena to do. So an occupational perspective means that the basic focus for us is actually that people uh, need engaging occupation, mm -hmm. uh, those type of occupations to, to live a good life. And, and mm -hmm. That is the occupational perspective we need to have as our professional uh, professional mm -hmm. perspective in, in that part. I mean, occupational science, just like that, became very sort of popular among mm -hmm. occupational therapists because this was a science for the practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, occupational science and occupational therapy are equally important in my thinking. Mm -hmm and in what I've been teaching and what I've been doing as a researcher, I'm very much influenced by, by both uh, mm -hmm. traditions. The other thing that I think is interesting about occupational science is that it invites people from different fields. Mm -hmm. So it's not just occupational therapists who are occupational science, scientists. Mm -hmm. The concept of occupational balance, which I think is also one of the key concepts to understand human occupation, because it's very seldom that that an occupation stands alone, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, the important thing that is that it has a relation to the whole pattern of, of a human being, and that this pattern has to be understood. People, I can't say that people found balance, and I don't think it's pi possible mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. balance. It's but it's possible to, on a daily basis, be working on balance, mm -hmm. and that it's small steps. And so if any of us, well, this is my theory, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if any of us want balance, it's not a destination, it's a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but what people were able to do is to start making lifestyle changes that led to feeling more in balance. Mm -hmm. Subjective nature mm -hmm. of balance. Mm -hmm. So I may, you know, I may have the same amount of time in different activities as you, but I may experience it different. I may experience it as I'm in balance and you experience as you're in imbalance or vice mm -hmm. versa. Um, And so I think it's inter the, the idea of occupational balance is interesting because you have the subjective nature mm -hmm. of it. By that I mean we engage in many occupations, but an occupation that are of special importance for you, I call that an engaging occupation. And that is mm -hmm. something 
which sort of develop through time in, in that way. I mean, you do a lot of occupation. Mm -hmm. You do, you brush your teeth every day. Mm -hmm. That is for certain an occupation. But you don't consider that an engaging occupation. It's something that, that is a base of you, of course, important, because losing the possibility to brush your teeth will have consequences. But while you're brushing your teeth, you're thinking about more important occupations that you will do during your day. And when an occupational therapist sees a client, I don't want to th them to think first, can this patient take a shower? Can they do this and this? I want them to think, can this have, does this person have an engaging occupation? And if so, uh, what other problems might there be in their occupational mm -hmm. patterns? And then, of course, you can come to the conclusion that the most important thing now is what I would call the basic occupation mm -hmm. in that part, to maybe to, to be able to, to uh, go to the bathroom or, mm -hmm. or to take a shower or whatever. For us, our students are uh, students in occupational therapy, and what we think is uh, uh, fundamental is, is um, theory about occupation. Uh, and that is both something that needs to be tied to practice for the for the com becoming occupational therapist, but also from the sort of the, the growing body of literature around uh, different aspects of occupation. And what we do is we, we have an experience-based curriculum in the beginning so that students who instead of having to sit and read lots of books and articles about something very abstract mm -hmm. we say I mean here's something very concrete try this out yeah. and they try it out and blog about it discuss it get supervision so occupational science in the first uh, the first course is called fundamentals in occupational science and occupational therapy and there are different modules in the course mm -hmm. uh, one module is occupational science specifically yes so. and that has to do with uh, choosing this occupation and analyzing it mm -hmm. from the perspective of these this literature mm -hmm. um, but uh, um, later in the program there are also modules of occupational science in um, uh, occupation and creativity course for instance mm -hmm. uh, the students in the first uh, uh, week of the program uh, I asked them um, please pick or select an occupation that you have never done before or that you haven't done for a very, very long time. And they say, well, how long is a very long time? Well, I mean, at least a few years, I used to say. And um, <clears throat> they were uh, then to uh, actually start doing this occupation. Um, and we, to make it very concrete, uh, we said twice a week and uh, at least for enough time to experience mm -hmm. the occupation. Uh, and it could be open. It could be everything from yoga to uh, uh, cycling, um, making food, trying new types of recipes, mm -hmm. learning a language, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So they were reading uh, uh, the first third of the book, A Model of Human Occupation, while they are now also uh, actually uh, engaging in the mm -hmm. occupation that they've chosen. Um, and each week there are sort of uh, uh, a few articles from occupational science that are also inserted into mm -hmm. the curriculum. So they have uh, occupational therapy through MOHO, mm -hmm. they have experience of the occupation, mm -hmm. and then they have some OS literature um, from uh, early USC studies mostly. And uh, while they're reading this, uh, we have seminars. So uh, each week is coupled with a seminar and the supervision in mm -hmm. small groups. And then the students uh, run a blog so that they uh, blog their experiences uh, online. And then they are in project groups, so they comment each other's blogs. Uh, and in these blogs, they have two parts. One is the experiential part of how it's going in their occupation. Mm -hmm. And the second is tying it to the theory that they're reading from mm -hmm. MOHO and from occupational science articles. We made it into um, a work rehabilitation mm -hmm. uh, intervention instead. It's called the Redesigning Daily Occupations, re mm -hmm. the Redo uh, Project. Mm -hmm. So we um, 
delivered this intervention to people to people who were already uh, on sick leave for stress-related disorders. Uh, and for various reasons it became only women. It because, it's because in one area, not far from here, there was a project ongoing for how to prevent sick leave mm -hmm. among women uh, mm -hmm. who were mm -hmm. uh, well stressed. So that was a very nice uh, uh, organization for us to collaborate with. First, um, sort of uh, mapping up uh, um, the, the the women's patterns uh, of daily occupations, mm -hmm. their patterns, and then they the women uh, needed to identify what would a, what would they need to change mm -hmm. to accomplish what they felt like a personally satisfying balance between different occupations. Mm -hmm. uh, how could they change things themselves? Mm -hmm. Did they need to change to, to involve their family? Uh, and did they perhaps need to start new occupations mm -hmm. to, to perceive this balance? Perhaps they had had to uh, uh, finish doing things that they really like to do, um, like um, going to concerts or creating Mm -hmm. fantastic things in a hobby <laughs> course or something uh, so it wasn't only about balancing what they really already had they also had to think should I leave something should mm -hmm. I say no to something should I say this I've done this enough now somebody else has to do this mm -hmm. at work or at home and I want to start doing these things so they needed to identify what changes that mm -hmm. should do among their daily occupations and this is very much uh, occupational science based it's mm -hmm. not it's not foreign from occupational therapy but the influence is very much from occupational science mm -hmm. so this is an example i mean how occupational mm -hmm. therapy really can benef benefit mm -hmm. from occupational science those who participated in the um, redesigning daily occupations um, intervention they uh, regained work capacity more rapidly than a care as usual group who did not get this mm -hmm. intervention. So it was uh, successful in return to work and in redu reducing sick leave. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also uh, effective in uh, accomplishing more satisfying everyday occupations in, mm -hmm. in general. And in the long term, it, in the very long term follow up, uh, in the most remote one, there was no difference in return to work. So, mm -hmm. but ev almost everyone in both groups were back at work at that time. Okay. But in the very long, t um, long term, uh, the, um, the women who got the intervention, they perceived a better occupational balance in their lives. Cette vidéo n'est que le début de notre exploration des sciences de l'occupation. Vous retrouverez davantage d'informations sur le site Internet du réseau OHS Occupation humaine et santé.